Hey, what is going on, everyone? And uh, welcome to um, welcome to the show. Welcome to uh, the morning show with uh, your host, myself, uh, Elliot Rodriguez. Uh, I am an, an artist uh, doing the art thing, and uh, and yeah, man. Um, today we have a really good show. I have a really good show for you guys. Uh, I have a, a a guest that I didn't think I would be able to get on the show because um, he's a really popular artist, really good artist. But I'm excited to have him here, and I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoy the show. We're going to talk about his uh, um, his art, his influences, and uh, projects that he's working on. And uh, and hopefully, in the last few minutes, you can probably do some uh, some live drawing. I don't know if you can hear that noise, but I apologize. And, and yeah, without any um, further ado, I'm going to uh, welcome to the to the show um, the the amazing artist Dan Dahl. Hey, hey, what's going on, Dan? Do an awesome uh, introduction. There. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got a round of applause to start off. Not yeah, bad. yeah. I, I've always been meaning to, to to try that out, but I couldn't find the clip that I like, so I just picked that one, and <laughs> I think it works pretty good. Nice. And um, and yeah, man. So uh, yeah, well, thank you for uh for coming. I really appreciate you uh, uh, uh taking your time to, to be here. And um, oh, it's my pleasure. And, uh, and, and yeah, so uh, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, uh, what got you into uh, art? Um, how, when did you discover that you had this talent for art? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, uh, back in first grade, pretty much, uh, we used to trace off Ninja Turtles, uh, me and my friends, you know. And uh, I decided to like one up it. And instead of tracing off, I'd look at the picture and replicate it, you know. And uh, it turned out I was pretty good at that. So I don't know, that kind of got me started, started to get, you know, positive attention for that. And so it started with Ninja Turtles. And then I discovered like Wolverine. I just thought he was cool as heck. And, you know, Batman was big when I was a kid because uh, that Batman 89 movie. Um, so, and then, uh, you know, so I kind of wanted to draw comics since I was eight. <laughs> that's like 30 years ago so um nice. you know um so now i i draw comics i wish it was um more like <laughs> like the old days but it is what it is so um, yeah yeah definitely i so so i think I th we're, we're pretty much the same age actually so that's nice so we are we grew up in the same uh era of uh, comics yeah the, the 89 movie of batman was really yeah good. yeah that was um, a big deal when i was a kid um, awesome. So in first grade is when you noticed that you had this knack for drawing and then you just continued working with uh, comics and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd buy comics just for the art for a long time. I was maybe yeah, yeah. like 12, 11, 13. Then I actually started to read them and got right into the good stuff right away. Like I read Dark Knight when I was 13 and oh, nice. Watchmen probably the same year or year after that. And, um, yeah, started reading comics. I, and then, you know, it was like the late 90s when I was, you know, going through my teen years and my formidable art years and yeah. comics really sucked. <laughs> it was really hard to find good comics in like the late 90s, you know. But, um, you know, so I started to uh, read things that weren't really all that mainstream, like more ma some manga stuff, a lot of independent type stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, just whatever was good or was well drawn, which was hard to find back then. I mean, Lionel Yu was good in the late nineties when yeah. it seemed like all these other artists just disappeared. And, yeah. um, yeah. you know, a lot of those artists eventually came back, but you know, those big nineties image artists just all disappeared by the late nineties. And, and that kind of went from uh, reading that stuff. And then it was into the two thousands and, I was working in a comic shop. I had just read everything, everything on the stands. Uh, you know, that was during like the Civil War, Marvel Civil War stuff. Yeah, good stuff. And comics got really good again. I mean, I yeah, think for a bit. I think DC was always fairly solid, um, yeah. but their art wasn't that good. And then, kind of like in the when the two thousands hit, the DC art got really good, and you know that. Uh, Jim Lee came on to do Hush, 
and then they had countdown to uh infinite crisis and that whole thing and those are some of my favorite comics uh nice. that whole era you know and i continue to read comics up until about four years ago when uh they nice. did rebirth which was awesome and then um they immediately followed it up they brought wally west back from life i was super excited and count on and then they immediately made him a villain like six months later or whatever it was and the yeah. whole thing was just collapsed like my whole excitement yeah. for comics just when they, they just started to get really bad and now they're so awful i mean i've already done left mainstream comics yeah. you know what i'm saying but now yeah, it's definitely just, i feel you on that yeah you know yeah. it's um, just getting pretty lame now dude no, yeah, definitely, yeah. The, it just the stories are horrible. They're destroying <laughs> the characters yeah. that we got. Yeah, and they, they, I, they, I don't they, know if you've seen uh, these images of um of uh, this X Men comic that's got this. Uh, I think it's Psylocke. I don't know which which character is it that's in the in the diner. I think it is sending a tweet talking about oh, tweeting. And yeah, from was, yeah, I don't, just I don't horrible know stuff. That was that was like oh yeah, I'm a jeez, it's just so know. awful, and you know. There still doesn't seem to be any end in sight. Like I've given up on mainstream comics. So I, yeah. I actually hope it gets worse. <laughs> Not that it could. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we're at that point. Yeah, because uh, uh, them turning away those fans brings more fans over here to CG, and then yeah, exactly. Us. Yeah. yeah, just like yeah, so keep doing. Continue make about everybody your way. <laughs> break every character you have. Keep breaking. Yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely. I want to see Wolverine making out with Spider Man and. <laughs> that should yeah, I, I was uh, <laughs> I was uh, commenting in uh, on Domingasos with um, the Six Five Six crew. They were talking about this new uh, Batman and Spawn um, comic, <laughs> and I made a, I made a comment that I hope they they better at least kiss in that comic. Like <laughs> yeah. if, they, if they don't kiss in that comic, I'm gonna be disappointed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> come on, you gotta be more progressive, guys. Yeah, man. If there's not if there's not a if there's no guy on guy action. I'm gonna be really disappointed. <laughs> yeah. with you, so. No, I, but, I did love the original though, uh, the Mick Farley, yeah. Ron, Frank Miller written one. That I yeah, mean, I, we're talking about early comics. I mean, that was before I, I. That was probably one of the first comics I actually read, and I was like, "This is awesome." Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the art, we're much more imagination know. back then. I, yeah. I hear people saying things. You know, I've heard people talk smack about that book, but to me, that book is just awesome. I love the fact that yeah. you know, there's this villain they introduce this like chick and you know they take care of her in one page like the villain of the story is not i mean because you're threat, with yeah. spawn and batman doing a team up like he, he got spawn's yeah. magic and stuff like There's yeah no they're gonna way. just take care of that situation yeah. immediately <laughs> it's like yeah, exactly so the the it's you crazy know, stuff. crux of that story was just the phenomenal art and you know batman and spawn meeting it's still, yeah, it definitely. just looks great. I, I don't know. I still, uh, yeah, I, I cracked that thing out for inspiration. Yeah, definitely. And no, I'm excited that I'm excited that they got Greg on that, uh, Greg Capullo back on that because uh, his art is really good. His art yeah, is really, I, really good. You know, I hope McFarland inks it because they have a, a cool, uh, I know you're on a flight that just took off, Elliot. <laughs> uh, but, you hear that? Yeah, so I'm like, you're on a plane, but that's. That's why it's all good. Um, yeah, somebody's upstairs drilling, man. Just like just when I'm about to do the show, some people <laughs> yeah. upstairs start, start start drilling, man. It's messed up. No, I, um, hey, let, let me cut you off for a second. Uh, I want to say hi to everybody in the chat before I start yeah, thinking about ignoring them. But, uh, but, but yeah, we got <laughs> the plane's taking off again. <laughs> um, yeah, we got genuine comments. What's going on, Dave? Good to see you. Thank you What's for uh, stopping by. Yeah, oh, I agree. Get that, out of here, right? Get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, we got Hojo. Thank you What's very up, much, Hojo? Hojo. Thank you, thank you for uh, sharing Hojo's and spreading man. the word, man. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. And um, we got genuine again. We got Studio Seven Point Seven Point Six Two. Hail, brother! What's going on? He goes at plan, man. Hojo makes a good point. Don't interrupt your enemies while they are in the process of destroying themselves. Uh, yeah, I, I suck at that. So that's what we want. Yeah. Uh, these guys yeah, just get worse and worse. Okay, but, general. Uh, you know, Todd McFarlane with that Spawn Batman thing, I think uh, Todd seems fairly solid. I could read some Spawn right now, maybe, but I don't know. 
that just haven't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always been impressed with uh, with uh, Tom McFarlane. He's always been an inspiration of mine. And, um, yeah, he's, his art is getting – it's really – I mean – the style is always there. He, um, yeah, he's uh, he's all about the details. He's all about rendering, heavy rendering, and now with the uh, digital work, he's able to like zoom in and really get in there and just start. Yeah, getting in on it, um, which is great. I like and, the uh, she spawn design. I think that looks. I think she looks pretty cool. Yeah, um, and um, and also for for the people, I'm going to show off that video that I have. Um, we got Mutt Man in the house. What's going on, Mutt Man? We got Michael Ibarra. What's going on, Hermano? Yeah, Como estás? Was very dope. I love that book. Actually, that inspired my work on the uh, those uh, lost pages, two pages that I did. Yeah. Uh, Good stuff. I'm going to show that off. I was thinking also. about that Spawn book. I wanted to bring some of that grittiness that that yeah. book had. Uh, and and I, so there is a nod to that book to me. That comes through yeah. in some of that art. Um, yeah, definitely, we'll take a look at that. In, in I mean, I have a lot of influences, but that that book is like a childhood kind of a, you know, some that stuck with me uh, ever since awesome. those days. Awesome. And um, I wanted to uh, to, sell, to tell the people in the chat that in case you don't know who uh, who Dan Dahl is, I'm going to show you this video so you can get a look at some of the artwork that he's done recently. Just so you have an idea of, uh, of who he is and, um, and uh, why I'm, I'm excited to have him here. So uh, just uh, for a second, I'm going to show this. And, uh, just take a look. Here's some of your... Uh, apologize for the lack of music, but you can see the art. That was cool. Awesome. Hey, just, yeah, thanks, yeah, that was cool to just kind of see that. Yeah, that, that's. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize for the lack of uh, of uh, music in there, but yeah, that's some of the artwork that Dan's uh, done recently, and he's also uh, tied um, with uh, with um, the Zade Comics, and uh, I'm going to show off uh, some of the work you did with them also. And I wanted to ask you, um, aside from the, the from. Uh, like the image comic creators, are, are there? Is there any uh, particular artist that stands out to you that that you would say heavily inspired or influenced you in, in your art? Yeah, for sure. Uh, for me, I, I feel like the three big ones are, you know, and um, well, I, Kirby was an influence on me in my early twenties. I didn't really understand what the appeal about Kirby stuff was until. Uh, hmm. You know, I, I I got some essential Fantastic Four. The first like, um, it's a black and white reprint of uh, what Kirby was doing. You now Fantastic Four, one through a hundred, past a hundred, and uh, you know, so there was a time where I was studying Kirby and how. Um, there's something about Kirby, like the weight of his figures. And the masses of black moving across the page, page and whatnot. Uh, he just has a lot of power. So that was an influence that was big. Uh, Frank Miller is a big influence for me. Uh, even to this day, I think he's probably my biggest. Um, I don't. I don't really like look up to artists so much as I used to. Um, but uh, Frank Miller is kind of like. He's kind of at the top, uh, so he was yeah. a big influence on me. Uh, and me, love that Sin City stuff and his storytelling. Um, other than that, uh, Doug Mankey. It's not somebody people talk about a lot, but he is fantastic. 
if there's any one artist I could just draw like him and be happy, it'd be Doug Mink. I'd just be, I'd be done learning nice. at that point. I'd just be like, you know, I, he's really fast too. Um, he's just an amazing artist. So those are probably my three biggest influences, I'd say. Um, you know, Bank, Mackey, and Kirby, nice. Yeah, you know, nowadays I do kind of look back at some of the 90s guys like Stephen Platt stuff I really like a lot. Um, Mark Silvestri. The, those yeah, are probably um, the two bigger, like, 90s guys that I'm kind of more yeah, studying nowadays a little bit more often, even though I have always liked them. But mm -hmm. it just kind of looking at their stuff a little bit more kind of gets me going sometimes looking at their stuff. Yeah, there's a, 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 a I can see the plant influence on the rendering here on the side on the uh, on a lot yeah, of your art, which, which is and yeah, there's some Finch stuff. Yeah. in there too. Uh, Finch has been an amazing artist. Uh, you know, I like his style. Yeah. So there's some Finch. Uh, I think Finch has rubbed off on pretty much every comic book artist. <laughs> it's been very yeah, uh, influential really in teaching yeah. people, I think, uh, like rendering yeah. stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's really uh, difficult. Oh, Joe uh, he has yeah. the, yeah. The Fantastic Four co collection? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's better without the color, I think. Um, yeah. Especially Joe Sinat was an amazing anchor on Kirby stuff. On Kirby, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I saw a video a while back um, of uh, an interview of Joe Sinat saying that uh, he he never like for the first eight years of uh, of the collaboration that they, that they did that they did together he never met uh, Kirby. Oh it wasn't yeah. So like they had a uh, like a some kind of like Marvel event, uh, like eight not eight seven eight years after they had started working that he was finally able to meet him. Uh, and I thought that was pretty interesting that they yeah. had such a great such a great collaboration and then not even not even knowing each other, which is it's, it's awesome. That's, so. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. I mean nowadays with the internet and everything. You know, it's so easy yeah. to, you know, meet people and everything. Exactly. Yeah, Michael Livada says, love your figure work. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of your figure work. Also. Thanks, yeah, yeah. You know, that's like kind of my main focus right now is uh, figure work. It's To me, it's never good enough. So yeah. it's an area that I can always refine. Like, I'm, I'm not the master of anatomy or anything like that. But... Yeah. <laughs> Um, but figure work has gotten lost, um, in comics lately, it, um, you know, it, and then you look back at like books from the seventies, eighties, these Marvel books and with amazing figure work, you know, John Buscema stuff and everyone had, I mean, you couldn't get a job if you didn't have this really great figure work nowadays. I don't know what it takes to get a <laughs> no, it takes some, I don't know. The the right ideology. I think. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I, I've always said, you know, if I want to work for Marvel, I just come out as trans. And I should be hired <laughs> immediately. Um, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, you know, I like a, when it comes to figure work and stuff and my drawings, I really like to zoom the camera in and make the figures as big on the page as I can. Yeah. Um, so I do that a lot. You know, some of the stuff is, you know, like Yusagi here is an older drawing. I did this, geez, maybe seven years ago, six, seven years ago, something like that. Oh, wow. Um, this one's like four or five years old. But yeah, I noticed yeah, that you have like a series, a series of like Venom inspired characters. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> Was, was that like a, a Venom, lot of Venom stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, Venom was big, and everyone was asking me for a Venom sketch cover. Nice. And um, yeah, I did a ton of Venom this, Venom that. Um, and I don't mind drawing the character. Yeah, this is another yeah. sketch cover, so that's done with Copic markers on really bad quality paper. I have to say, those spawn blanks are just really rough and weird to work on. Uh, you know, oh, you made I did it, what I could. Made I made it work. It great, yeah. I made it work, but it was yeah. a pain in the ass. I, I think the paper yeah, was yeah. tearing up my markers. You know? Oh, man. 
but uh, yeah, this was cool. This is a, a commission I got when I was in Houston. Um, that Tiggum do is a Marat Michaels character. Um, Which one? Cool. I, I, oh, uh, that Tigger with the venom. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's. You know, what I like about this drawing, this uh, El Dorado, is um, the horizontal line work. For the the shading yeah on the eyes yeah right it's here. horizontal okay. stare under the hair i think that's yeah and the eyes and that's still with markers so it's hard to uh you know there's no erasing marker once it's on there yeah. you're stuck with it exactly. and um i've got the glow of the eyes pretty cool there oh, i don't like, like this that, one yeah. it's pretty fun yeah. um now uh, did you uh, go to? Did you get any, or do you have you gone to uh, art school or anything like that to get uh, to, to learn about art, or is this uh, I am, self-taught? I'm completely self-taught. Um, oh, nice. The only, you know, I had some high school courses that were nothing. I couldn't. I had to take a pottery class because they didn't have to. They didn't have any art classes available. So I mean, talk about a failure in the education system. <laughs> you know, it's like. Here I'm an artist. I'm good. Oh, I can't be in an art class because it's oh, that's not so stupid pottery crap. Yeah, yeah. I, I skip pottery class, man. I I went to a few, but I was seeing someone at the time. I just skipped class and go hang out with her. That was <laughs> I skipped a lot of school. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't have any formal training. But I do. I I would take my stuff to local conventions and get some. Um, feedback um and that stuff you can learn a lot you know from yeah going to conventions as they say this is just you know any buddy wanting to be a comic artist uh, they'll get the same advice to go to conventions and get portfolio reviews and you know show it to other artists um even though they're not going to give you a job or anything like that yeah just get some feedback yeah get and uh get brutal feedback the more it hurts, yeah. the better it is. Um, people what, get what has been some of the most? And they don't want to get beaten up, <laughs> but yeah. you gotta get beat up. And even to this exactly. day, I mean, I got the people that are critical of my art. I I thank them. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, as good as I might be, sometimes I still get critiques and I still get mm -hmm. feedback, and uh, all that stuff is good. You know, when you start to get older and you start to know what you're doing a little bit more, you know when not to listen and when to listen. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of those quick conversations I've had with different artists at cons or even occasionally some editors, um, you know, some of that stuff really stuck with me. I think the big one, um, oh, thanks, Mutt Man. Um, mm -hmm was Jim Shooter. I showed Jim Shooter. If you're too afraid to show Jim wow. Shooter's your stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That, he's a big guy. He is tall yeah. as heck. But, you know, don't be too intimidated because you might end up getting the best advice you ever got. And I did. I mean, I think Jim Shooter, you know, this was a long time ago. This 10, 15 years ago or something like that. Um, I showed him my stuff and he said... Uh, he liked it overall, but he said, like, there's some specific things, uh, like the way I drew a hand and this and that. He said, the term he uses is too comic booky. Yeah. And I think that's great advice for every comic book artist is we get so comic booky. We get really, uh, it's hard to explain, but you get so into comics and what maybe how, the whole way this guy drew or this guy drew, it, you lose all sense of reality. You know, all my stuff I feel like is based in some kind of reality. I don't want it to be too comic booky. Mm. You know, even though it ends up looking very comic booky, yeah, but I try to get away from that. You know, and um, it, some of the weird cop outs that comic artists have done over time. Um, you know, if, if you're not sure about a hand, don't look at how another artist did it. Just look at real life. Yeah. I mean, mm. hands are the easiest thing because you could just take a picture of your hand. I mean, I don't do that as often as I used to. I don't think I did it here in this drawing, but, yeah. you know, 
that stuff is more helpful. Just taking from reality and not, not taking from uh, other comic book artists so much. Um, this yeah, is a more recent think... Copic drawing I did. Um, uh, it was just supposed to be like a cool apocalypse that I got to work in this cool drill. <laughs> and then he has, has like, yeah, I get to draw the cool drill thing. And then yeah. uh, all that made up BS, uh, like technical the, the stuff. Tech. Yeah. I, I, that's kind of one of my favorite things to draw lately is just weird text that doesn't work. And especially yeah. if I have to draw it a second time, you draw it the once, make it all crazy and cool. And I just, you know, and it's just not, it yeah, it's not panel to panel work there. It's just like a cool. And, and um, then yeah. how, how, what, what do you go about? What do you do? Like in terms of critique, like where, how do you, how do you go about getting it? Do you post somewhere or, or do you ask someone oh. specifically, or, or is this just random when you post oh. some art that you get the critique? How, how do you go about? Yeah, it's a little more random where um, I'll post art or, you know, um, you know, or just doing art for people. Uh, you end up, it just seems to happen. I, I don't go seek it out, but I just okay. seem to, to get, you know, some feedback. It, it's usually good, um, but, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, I mean, the best way is, yeah, like I was saying, going to an artist, but you have to have a thick skin. And then you have to be your own best critique uh, or critic. <laughs> Am I speaking yeah. French now? Uh, I mean, critic <laughs> in that way. Uh, uh, like, it's good to do like a lot of stuff, I think, and not look at it for a while and then look at it, you know, a year later or months later when you mm. hardly remember drawing it. And then you can catch different things and. Uh, it's one cool thing about like Instagram, I'd say, or, you know, anything that's similar to that, where you're able to just have a gallery right in front of you and all your work is sitting there. You can just scroll through your own work and just see the overall gist of yeah. things. And my, my thing is I try not to repeat very often. That way I'm always learning new stuff. So I'm always trying to draw new different stuff you know, different angles, uh, different characters, uh, different everything. And yeah, this is, uh, this Joker mm -hmm. one is done with Copic markers. And, uh, this one is like the one where I just want to stop doing Copics after this. Cause I feel like I'm not really going to do much better than that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, really good. Really yeah, good. As often as I work with Copics, I, it's always, tough for me because it, it's permanent marker so you can't mm. go back so it's always like drawing with the you know i don't know the stick up my ass or something I, it's like it's just yeah. this uncomfortable feeling where it's like uh you know um i hope i don't screw this up kind of yeah, exactly i i uh i've heard uh, from people that have used copics or have or no, not have that have um yeah they have used copics to say that um or I don't know if this is a myth or if this is true or not because I haven't worked with copics at all but um but they, they say that over time uh, the 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 ink fades away and then it doesn't look as fresh as it does when you first did it have you have you had that I uh, you know um that over time thing I I feel like sometimes yeah it's like just the next day it seems to look lighter. Than the day before oh, wow. but i don't feel like that's the sun or anything like that i think that's just natural the ink settling into the paper more or something like that mm. um but overall i um i haven't noticed my copic stuff fading exactly. but i don't own any of my copic stuff because i usually it's just, all been commissions it's all commissions i think i do have that uh i still have that yosaki yojimbo one and it just sits in oh, a nice. book, so it hasn't seen sunlight, so it's just as fresh, I think, nice. as the day I made it's all it. About, it's all about storing it, I think, no? Yeah. Um, I There may be, like, an adhesive you could spray, or, like, I uh, say adhesive, I mean, like, some kind of art uh, 
protection, you know, spray that you yeah. can just spray it and keep it better. I, um, but I haven't had a problem with it. Nice. And um, um, have you all of your work that we've shown off so far has been traditional? Do you do any digital work? Um, actually, yeah, I'm incorporating more digital stuff. Most of my finished. Um, well, my process nowadays is I, you know, if it's comic pages, like sequentials, I'll lay it out on paper first. Mm -hmm. I print off, I'll actually print off little, um, like thumbnail areas, like a little page template, like six, mm -hmm. seven, eight times on a piece of paper, and then kind of draw out the book on paper first, scan that in and place everything where I want it. Um, so scan in, I uh, make sure everything's kind of in the right spot. Yeah. Maybe even uh, tighten that up digitally, take that rough sketch and tighten it up digitally and then print that off. Pencil that. that. Uh, I don't go right into ink still typically. Um, okay. I'll pencil, then I'll do the pencils uh, with the light box and then take that page and ink it on paper. But now I'm inking digitally for the last few things I've drawn. Um, just because I like the freedom of redoing. Um, that, uh, redoing like some rendering that maybe I didn't like, you know, it's not permanent. So it, plus you can draw in white better because I never found a good whiteout that I could feel like I no. can draw, yeah. you know, like I was drawing with ink, you know, because I never, ever did find the right whiteout. I mean, stuff that's okay, but not like I'm drawing with it. Mm. Um, so that's the benefit of digital. That and if there's any fixes that need to be made, I don't mind so much because it's all digital. Like say maybe I got somebody's costume wrong or something, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Everything. In you can go back yeah. in and, 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 you know, nowadays I still have the pencil on paper though. So I still do have some original art. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Yeah. For me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, typically I'm more working on traditionalist and that's what I favor, but I'm starting to incorporate more digital just because I've gotten comfortable with my iPad and adjusting the settings in Clip Studio, turn that pen pressure down a bit or maybe up. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> I just the pen pressure and stuff like that. And yeah, I used to have a Wacom, Wacom, whatever. Yeah. And never did feel all that comfortable on that. I have to say iPad is way better in my book than nice. a Wacom, but a Wacom is weird to me. It's like a big sheet of glass that you're drawing on yeah. and like, it's almost like if I you're drawing on paper and you took a big sheet of glass on top and then tried to draw on the paper or something like that because there's mm. it's it's weird it's not it's not as close uh, the the pen the Apple pencil is way better uh, you nice. can angle the thing a little bit you get like little angles and stuff it's just uh, it's a lot better so now that I've gotten used to that I'm, I'm able to do more digital stuff. You know, sometimes nice. I'll just lay something out digitally. I won't even do it on paper. Print that out, pencil it, scan it, ink it digitally. So it, when it comes to, have, you know, I can't do it digitally. It's not working out. Penciling when it comes to what? Uh, working digitally, I can't. I can't pencil okay. digitally. It just doesn't. Just doesn't and seem do you, to work out. Do Do you have a, a preferred? Um, like a preferred inking tool? Like, do you prefer microns or, or do you use Copics all the way? Multi liners? Uh, do you I, use I've been using these, brushes? I, I've been using Tombow brush pins most of the time. And, nice. Um, yeah, I use those also. Yeah. Uh, but I started to incorporate some other tools. Um, what's those like? I don't remember what they're called. It's a multi liner. Um, it's not Copic, though, it's another brand. Uni, Unipin, I think it's the Uni. Unipins, yeah, they have they have really good ones also. Um, yeah, um, those are cool. What's up, Joe? Yeah, I mean, um, cool. yeah. I wanted to uh, shout out to the people in the chat. What's going on, Joe? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, 
Infinity Comics, so Leandro, what's going on, man? Good to see you. B.A. Turner, what's going on, man? Thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming coming by. Rob Wilson, also, thank you for, for stopping by. Mutt, man, Hojo, Michael, thank you very much, guys, for stopping Thanks, by. Rob. And, um, yeah, and showing some, uh, some some appreciation and support for uh, for Dan. Um, he does incredible work, as you can see here, uh, with this stuff um, that I'm showing, the artwork. And... Um, and yeah, so here's the yeah. To speaking of Joe, here's the the piece that you did for uh for Reaper Destroyer. Yeah, really good stuff. Um, really good stuff. Yeah, this was definitely some plat type wine art. I'm yeah, for I think uh, besides for his cape stuff is more. I'm not sure who that is, but you can see it in like his biceps more. Yeah, exactly. Some of that kind of platism. And, uh, and this uh, was really cool because uh, man, if he's it was colored by Dan Kemp, who's a spawn. Yeah, the spawn colorist. The spawn colorist. Yeah, yeah. And man, that was such a cool yeah, thing sure to did. have him. Uh, and thank you, Joe, for uh, sending me, you know, uh, you know, sending me the commish, <laughs> uh, the work because yeah, that's a fun character to draw. I'd like to draw him again sometime. We had uh, like some different layouts, and. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be cool to use some of those other layouts with the character too. So nice. You know, my and, cape um, was <laughs> I drew the cape. Everyone um his cape is usually big and flowy and like cool, more spawn like I but for this I wanted this sort of drippy type where things are just kinda it, to yeah. reflect the like the blood dripping down. I wanted this sort of downward kind of uh pull to the motion of this page kind of a yeah where he's like a battle heavy you know yeah like there's yeah. like he's been burdened by a battle yeah. in some way um <laughs> nice and then speaking of um yeah, I, I i came across you um through through uh, the artwork and actually from uh, watching a joe show on, on the art and stuff show i saw your artwork there i saw you in the chats and the name uh, <laughs> Dan, Dan Dahl. No, yeah, Dan Dahl. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't learn about that too much later. But I had known you for a long time as Booty Juice. Could you tell <laughs> us like where that came from? Man, uh, I wanted to do some CG art, but I didn't want to put my yeah. name on it, basically, and because oh, okay. um, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that transition yet. Because I, I, I have a fan base. I didn't want to upset you know too much. Oh, okay. I, I just thought it was a nice. I don't know. I was able to just sort of hide behind the name Booty Juice for it didn't last long though. <laughs> uh, you know, I uh, there's a problem of authenticity. You know, I'd rather use my real name so people know I'm legit and I'm not hiding behind something. But yeah, Booty Juice is just a funny name to me and something my dad used to say. Uh, I don't know. He would just he always said r weird stuff. You know, <laughs> weird jokes, weird. It just would like the sound of something, so he'd repeat it all the time. Nice. And that was one of those things. Um, and what's funny is uh, people say not to go by the name anymore or anything. That's not up to me, really. <laughs> people still call me Booty Juice, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's funny to me, uh, especially when people say it on a stream and it just completely stops the stream like it's yeah. <laughs> just uh, uh, you know they're talking about one thing then all of a sudden the word booty juice shows up now everyone's talking about <laughs> how weird that is or whatever the yeah. you know the, the older guys they're more like that's gross but i'm not like a literal guy you know what i'm saying like so i, I don't think of it literally that. plus it it does mean uh something else actually it's like uh it's basically like a sedative if you're in like a crazy like a you've had a mental breakdown and you go into the institution and you start acting wild or something they hit you with the booty juice it's it's like <laughs> a sedative that makes you sleep nice. and like relaxes you calms you down so nice <laughs> yeah no, no it's just nice. funny to me it's still funny when i hear it yeah, you yeah. say booty juice three times. There's the and then he'll pop juice up. thing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, there it is. Say booty juice three times and your book sales increase. That's, yeah, there it is. He's got the idea. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would sign. To me, it was funny, too, because I don't know what it is about comic artists. And myself definitely included. We start to get full of ourselves and stuff. And like yeah, that's part of it, yeah. Yeah, acting everyone starts acting like they're all, you know, Leonardo da Vinci or something when we're just drawing comics, you know, it's just like cartoony, yeah. whatever, ridiculous stuff. So it's kind of a way of reminding me not to take things too seriously too. And um Exactly. Just because you see it all the time, like, dude, uh, the egos of comic book artists are f- fucking ridiculous. So it's yeah. like just it's nice to just play against that. And um, there was kind of an element of using that name at first, where it's like, I, th- I think this art is good enough that you can call me whatever you want, but you're still going to like the art. It, exactly. It's, yeah. it's kind of a manipulative thing. It's funny. <laughs> so. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to do something similar also when I first got back into drawing. I was going to go by like a pseudonym, like the name Nigma, just because I wasn't sure about like um, putting my name out there. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and then there's the I drip from that. I wasn't. Eye. I, <laughs> the, the eye is like. I nice. There is yeah, I wasn't sure about putting my name out there. The yeah, definitely. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like you're saying, um, going with the yeah, Nigma or like a pseudonym. Yeah, I wasn't sure about putting it. When you're joining a hate group, you want to ease into it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure about putting my name out there, but I was like, nah, forget it. Just uh, because I I want people to associate the art with my name also. Like, I I wanted that that association. uh, Yeah. But but yeah, I definitely hear you on that. And uh, (laughs) speaking of which, um, all of this great art has uh, been able to get you a lot of commissions, a lot of good work. And also, uh, you got picked up, scooped up by uh, Zay Comics by Phil to to do uh, work on their um, on the Lost Pages. Yeah, and I was really really happy with uh, what I uh, saw with, with your work um, on that. Uh, could you tell us uh, Thanks, how that came about? Yeah, um, you know Phil. Um, you know, the moment I posted anything with the Comics Gate hashtag, Phil kind <laughs> of jumped right into my DMs. He's probably one of the first people that just starts talking to you and then he you know like cool you talk and then um you know chat via uh twitter and then uh he's texting again and again and again it's like and they say no you're friends you know and um we have a lot of the same in like influences one thing about you know I, i usually talk to phil out of the diaz brothers they're both great though um but um, Phil and I are in agreement on about a lot of things. Uh, he understands good storytelling. He understands mm-hmm. what a good comic book is. And not everybody actually knows what a good comic book is. Like I've said, I've been a lifelong reader. I've read a ton of comics. Usually I just stick with the good stuff. So I've, le- I've read a lot of really, really good comics. Comics yeah. does have a very rich, wonderful, beautiful history fantastic writing uh art is great you know some fantastic art along the way um but i feel like maybe there are a lot of comic book fans who haven't actually read enough comics to really Mm -hmm. know what a good story is and what good storytelling looks like um because good storytelling you do have to kind of look past style and see sort of the structure of pages and layouts Mm. and that kind of a thing so you know when it comes to phil and i we 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 talk more about storytelling and wanting to do just a great a great book you know or you know where i don't know we just kind of get along creatively it's very easy to for us to work together yeah uh yeah i I was I was great, gratefully uh, surprised um, when I got Lost Pages. I, I read it like about a week after it came after I got it because because uh, of stuff that I was working on, and uh, the one of like the, one of the uh, the biggest uh, takeaways I got from that book is that um, Phil yeah like you were mentioning Phil has an incredible uh, knowledge of uh, how comic works and how to build up a page and how to use that full reveal on the on the next page to like maximum effect. 
there are many instances in the book where I, I turned it and I was like, bam, there it is. And I turned the page, bam, there's another uh, in your face uh, shot. And um, he worked it really well. And uh, yeah, he and understands yeah, pacing and he understands what makes a good story. And it's not yeah. scale. Yeah, scale really doesn't good. make a good story. It, it's heart. You know what I'm saying? A, a story has to have heart. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, and um, that's something. And I'm gonna, yeah, that people yeah. don't get. I don't. I don't feel like uh, Phil gets it though. He knows what a good story is, and like you said, the his pacing and his reveals and everything are. Uh, yeah, really good. Really good. So he sets the artists up really well. Um, yeah. Especially you know if you can take those cues, um, things work out really nicely. And uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And Hojo says, as a writer, I'm, ba I'm biased. Uh, the story is crucial to continuing support. The yeah. art sells the book, but the writing sets the book. Yeah, definitely. Hojo's right. I mean, you know, yeah. art will get you in the door, but if the story's bad, you might not return for the next one because you don't care. Yeah. You naturally just won't care. Exactly. Um, and, and artists if, if do you're... change sometimes book to book. So, you know. That's true. If That's the story's good enough, I, I, you know. They might come back regardless of who's on the book i suppose exactly and, and if you allow me um, i'm going to share uh uh the two the the pages that you yeah. worked on in lost pages too so i can so we can continue yeah, we uh, could, diving into we this could uh, kind of talk about the storytelling ideas behind it you know what yeah. the idea was this is um, uh yeah uh, so i did the two pages this is the yeah, I, yeah go I ahead finished, Tell us. i basically did like i guess you call this what the epilogue um, yeah. Of the book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like, you know, um, it's just two pages. Um, I didn't know what happened on the page previous to this. I, I didn't. I don't know how it ended. Uh, all I knew is mm -hmm. I wanted to slow everything down, and I highly doubt whatever it was would be these long panels like this. These long, sort of cinematic, very wide shot panels. And I was kind of using that to, I wanted to slow the viewer down as much as possible and just get him to stop for a moment because I knew on the next page is the big reveal. Plus this page has um, this moment here between these two panels where he's, uh, somebody, he hears something and he turns around quick. And yeah. that was like the main crux of, the story on this first page is I wanted you to feel that mm. change. So that's why he's, his head is on the table and he's beaten up. And then it's in the weird. very next moment, he's up, flip the other way. So that's another thing going on is the right to left or actually left to right, left yeah, to right, left to right, left to right. Things. And then by the time he hears that and turns, I've reversed the direction from of the character from facing left to right now he's facing right to left and that sort of jars the viewer too that they you know something has happened and then uh, we got the big page reveal that um this hot chick has snuck up on him um and she has some powers of her own that can affect silhouette and um if you read the book uh, you'll know that Silhouette's kind of hurt at this point. Yeah. And um, he was in that big battle. Mm -hmm. So he's not in, like, his best place to start a fight either. <laughs> so she essentially kind of gets the jump on him here. And then what happens wow. after this is uh, the beginning of Lost Pages 3, uh, which we've started working on. And um, I'm going to be opening up that book. Oh man, sweet! And um, could you tell us? Could you tell I'm us like how many, book, how many pages? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do ten pages for last pages three. Oh, okay, nice. And then um, um, we're talking about me penciling the people story, the Ashcan. Nice. So it'd be like the people Ashcan two. Um, I did layouts and some kind of breakdownish layouts on the last on the people. One ash can, 
No, um, I got that here also. So I don't know, like my interest right now artistically is sequentials. I do enjoy doing sequentials. It's just, for me, they take a little longer because it's multiple images and I don't really like to do shortcuts. Um, uh, so yeah, here we have the people ash can where I did some, um, like I said, I was doing the layouts for this book and they kind of, the layouts vary in the amount of detail I put in. Um, you know, this is I was more just focused on the storytelling, which is cool to just, uh, take your own style out of something and just focus on the basics of storytelling and, um, uh, you know, setting the artists up for cool stuff too. Um, some of the, a lot of my layouts for the people was, um, I try to set up, um, it, uh, his name's Avery Butterworth who did the finishes. I tried to set him up the way I'd like to get set up if I was going to pencil something. Yeah. Um, so like, this I didn't indicate the background, but I just wanted to indicate where the perspective is and everything. The perspective have an idea. is going to be so that this really has a lot of weight to it. And this is, of yeah. course, one of those big uh, reveals that Two we were page. talking about yeah. that um, Phil is really good at setting up. Um, nice. So yeah, he gets the big. Uh, this is sort of the people being introduced into the book. And he makes his big dramatic superhero entrance. I, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, it looks great. His entrance, because uh, he's not a superhero. I wouldn't consider him to be. I don't know. I don't know why you consider him, but like one of those anti-heroes, I guess you could say. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't even like the term heroes when I am yeah. <laughs> talking about this. I just prefer like protagonist. There you um, go. Because yeah. there's some like genre bending type stuff. And lost pages. I don't really consider it a superhero book. It's more pulpy-ish. Um, yeah. So yeah, this would be the next page after that. He sort of has this cool um, bat, which he uses um, with the spikes on it. Yeah, with the uh, he uses the spikes sort of. Uh, <laughs> You know, I don't. He uses it to swing. This spike is sort of meant to <laughs> dig into concrete or whatever, so that he can swing nice. from building the building if he wants or whatever. And um, yeah, you know, I this is I like I do like to follow storytelling rules, like the left to right thing. If a character's on the left, he remains on the left of the panels, unless it's time to change, unless I want to do something dramatic or something. I, I, like I think that's what, yeah. you know. I, th I think people downplay the importance of that. I think it's really important, though, um, to keep that character as on the left. He stays on the left, you know, unless, you know, you need to change it. Unless there's a, a panel. Unless there's a reason. Like, yeah. 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 Cross. Oh, you know, you don't want to really break that rule. But, uh, so yeah. I keep that rule here. And then the next page. When I do break it, it's because he's gotten snuck up on, kind of like what happened um, to the silhouette in the previous pages we were looking at. Let's take a look. Uh, and and how, how do you approach um, your proportions? Do you do you check that just innately, like you draw what you feel looks right, or do you measure it out? How do you approach um, proportions? I, like I usually, because they're very um, very on point. They're very they're really good. Yeah, this it's just a matter of sticking sticking with it and drawing all the time. Um, I've jumped around a little bit as far as like heads tall and stuff of what I like to do. Um, I think this is probably where I am nowadays. I, I'm not sure how tall the figure would be, how many heads, but at least the nine and a half. Um, nice, okay. I, I think people draw the their heads too big almost all of the time. It's very yeah. common, very, very common um, for younger artists or whatever to draw just these huge heads where people start to look like. Um, too cartoony. Yeah. yeah, like even like 
bigger heads than normal human proportions. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> people start to look like little kids running around or, that, or um, I guess I'll use the term little people. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it, yeah. yeah. Michael says last panel showed a lot of Frank Miller. You know, yeah, you know, like he is a huge influence on me. And um, Frank Miller was a big influence for the people, actually. Um, his uh, Daredevil stuff. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Phil, both Phil and I were taken from Frank Miller. And um, so, yeah, there's definitely it's Frank Miller influence. influence. See, I broke, one of the rules I broke here that I don't like to do is, uh, one, two, three, uh, panel three, his bat comes up and breaks panel one. That's a no-no. <laughs> That's essentially a no-no. But right here? it kind of, yeah, right here? there, yeah. yeah. That's a no-no. I mean, you're only supposed to break the panel moving forward. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you mm -hmm. shouldn't go from three back into one. But it kind of worked anyways. Um, I felt like it worked. And it needed to be done yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, you know, this page was not written. Yeah, this, was, yeah. this page was all all me and so was kind of left this fight scene was all me pretty much um besides for that introductory panel was phil's idea in the previous page mm -hmm. um but yeah this uh you know and the choreography um it may everything makes sense uh do, do you uh yeah how do you go about choreography uh, doing the choreography for the yeah. fights because i just I've think seen, i've out. seen uh, a, I a sit bunch of comics where it doesn't make sense, but yeah, oh, this makes perfect it's, sense. Oh, it's terrible yeah. when comics do that. It destroys the comic. Like, what are you doing? Everything just reads as static. I I hate bad choreography in the... I mean, this is what a comic is. It's, yeah. it's mostly staging. It's mostly figuring out how this stuff is actually going to work. So I think of it more of almost like a, you would a movie mm -hmm. or something like that, you know? Things have to work and make sense in some kind of way. And I, I despise when a comic, you're reading it, and the it, the supposed action scene is just chaos. Yeah. You know, I, I hate it. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> who's punching? Yeah, who's punching yeah, who? Who's and, and what moment here? that came out? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this it's all clear and understandable. I, I yeah. hate nothing more than reading a comic book. I have no... Pardon my French. I'm starting to get all worked up. I'm starting to cuss. Ah, it's, it's okay. No, no worries at all. <laughs> and I can't understand what is going on in the book. I've read a million comics in my life. And if I don't know what's going on in your book, you're making a mistake as far as I'm concerned. But <laughs> it's my pet peeve. I, you know, I hope, you know, and this next page this is a kind of a tougher page because some weird stuff actually happens. You know, he was in that. Um, position where he's about to get shot in the back of the head. We hear three gunshots and the three guys are down. So who shot these guys and what the heck is yeah. going on? That's kind of the point of this page. And uh, he has a solemn moment here, which uh, was written in the script to transition into the next moment where in the next page, he then has a wig on and is all set um, for work that day, nice. uh, which speaking is more of, uh, good writing by Zade. Um, yeah, speaking to Phil. <laughs> Phil here. Phil's in the chat. What's going on, Phil? Thanks for stopping by. We're taking a look at all of the of the layouts. Uh, they, uh, Dan sent me all of your, <laughs> the pages. We want to reveal <laughs> everything on Lost Pages 3 right now. <laughs> no, Lost Pages 2. Yeah. Lost Pages 3, none, <laughs> none of that is yeah, been nothing, shown yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're yeah. halfway through those 10 pages I'm doing for the last nice. pages three and, uh, they're yeah. looking good. Um, again, storytelling wise, I got uh, in those 10 pages, I got to do like kind of every kind of layout. There's everything there besides maybe a two page spread. So, nice. um, it's, yeah, it's going to be great. It's already great. Uh, we're halfway through that and then we'll, you know, see what's That's next. Awesome. It do you, do you have any plans, uh, Dan, of like doing your own uh, book uh, some sometime? In yeah, the yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'd like to get into doing my own IP stuff or shared IP. 
Do, do you um, have uh, characters already designed and created uh, that you haven't shown off yet? Or yeah, I I have stuff that I haven't shown. Um, you know, hopefully not too many people steal my ideas. I mean, or anything before I, or they wouldn't be able to steal it because I haven't showed it yet. But hopefully nobody else yeah. comes up with exactly what I'm thinking, or I'll have to scrap it. Um, nice. But yeah, I do like doing design work and designing characters and stuff. I feel like sometimes you design a character and the story kind of writes itself from there. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm just, going through that right now. I'm doing yeah, a bunch yeah. of uh, character sketches for, for, uh, for my book. Yeah. yeah I, um, you know, I like doing things, you know, for page rates and whatever, and all that's cool, but um, I'd like to do something more special nice. where I'm, I'm just kind of running wild kind of a thing and get yeah. to, you know, I draw a lot Absolutely. of other people's IPs and it's, it's cool to kind of um, put those characters in a cool light or try to make them as cool as I possibly can. But um, to design something from scratch it is really cool because then I know it's a certain way and yeah. I, I, I'm excited about the future as far as IP stuff goes and designing stuff. I'm really excited about yeah, that. Awesome, man. That's nice, man. And how long does it take you to, to finish a piece? Like to do, or whether it be a page or, or, or a commission, like like how long would it take for to do a, a full out piece? Not not just like, for example, like a, like a head sketch, but like including backgrounds and everything. How, yeah, how everything. You-, um, you know, I'd say probably three, three working days, you know? Oh, nice. I, I wish I could nice. get more full working days in. I, yeah. I sort of scramble to get time in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, so I'm all over the place. Sometimes I stay up late. Sometimes working, like say now ish during the day or midday. And I've had to be a little more flexible than I like to be. Um, definitely, I think the number one thing that improved my art right now is just having a set schedule to sit and draw. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. been the roughest thing for me. Um, with oh, nice, thing. interesting. So, yeah. so you don't you don't you don't dedicate, for example, like an hour or so every day or two hours. I a day wish to, to I draw? could, man. Yeah. I, I'm oh, just wow. uh, unfortunately nice. I have to be like liquid around here. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh yeah, the, the house duties. Yeah, no, no, and that, the, the way I am too, just naturally, is I love schedule. I love a hard yeah. schedule, and I, that's where I perform best. You know. Um. Oh, my buddy, there he is. Uh, he's my he's the guy that did the me. finishes. Avery here. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Right, is that yeah. Avery? No, I'm sorry. I, I sometimes I get people's uh, <laughs> things. Uh, are you, you're not Avery. Oh yeah, I was. Yes, that was my favorite page to work on. Yes, Avery. What's up, man? Uh, Avery's a really <laughs> cool guy. He was on my stream once, and we had a great time. He's he's a fun dude. He's nice. cool, and I love what he did with these pages. <laughs> yeah, it's Avery. He really like. I talk about the Frank Miller like influence and stuff. He had a very gritty Frank Millery klaus jansen type finish style to the book which i i thought was really worked well um nice. so the book did have this really cool feel to it nice i have a question here um from uh, willie p he's a he's a um, uh, advent follower he's a really good cool person a really cool dude he says as far as doing a piece how much detail would you say makes your job easier on the piece can there be too much info you know, um, to you me, it's not. Anything? To me, it's not the amount of detail. It's the amount of things, the amount of objects that you have yeah. in a piece. I don't know if you want to call that detail or not, but it's like, if it's one figure, you can add detail for you know, you can add yeah. a ton of detail and everything. And, um, but if it's a lot of figures and a lot of different things, then there's more of a balancing act that you have to play. And really, it's sort of knowing where your focal point is and letting the viewer breathe. You have to let the viewer breathe. And um, that's true. Uh, if there's that. something about layout and design that I just sort of built a sense of, it's almost like a sixth sense or something where it's almost hard to explain. But I know looking at one of my drawings as I'm working it, I know where the eye is going to go or where like po- I do like pockets of information in a piece like pockets of focal points. So I'm going to look here and then I know you're going to look over here and you're going to look there. Like 
like I was talking about slowing people down and the amount of stuff, if you draw a lot of different things, it's going to slow the viewer down more because mm -hmm. they have to look at the chair, look at the box, look at the, you know, there's more things to look at. Whereas, you know, say like the last panel is just, he's holding up a gun and that's actually simple. It's really only three things in that page. There's like the goo thing from Matt Black and then the gun and the, the gun hand, and that's all you're seeing. I mean, it's detailed, but there's less objects that your mind has to stop and look at. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So this, it happens quicker to the viewer, yeah. despite how much detail you actually put into it. So there is that balance of stopping the detail, starting it like, you know, sometimes, you know, like uh, the visions piece I did, uh, when you draw women, you don't want to add a lot of lines on them at all. Like, let the colors do most of the work, I'd say, as far as <laughs> um, the forms of the female. You don't really want to add a lot of lines at all. And knowing yeah. that, if I'm drawing a picture that is of a female, I know there's not going to I'll maybe crowd a bunch of background or crowd detail around her so that it's kind of like working in reverse yeah where, um all of the lines you know, the the space. Yeah. yeah it's kind of yeah. like that's the blank space almost is actually the female form yeah. and everything else has got all this detail to it yeah yeah that's so awesome it is that balance um and i think one reason why my stuff reads really well compared to a lot of people's is um I already lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Um, just, yeah, planning. I, I, mm. Some people go right onto the page. I don't do that. I plan it out. I, I work with drafts. I do the layout first. I make sure the layout's good without mm -hmm. any detail. And I try to make sure my proportion, like, yeah, proportions are right anatomy's right so that when i'm penciling i don't actually even really have to worry or think about where things are and where they go it's just more yeah. style and more adding some detail and refining the layout more nice. so i kind of build slow into the page you know um I, I find when i do go right into like i did some cards recently mm -hmm. uh, like sketch cards just in black and white and for those i want to just bang them all quick so i was just jumping right into ink which is something i don't do but i did notice yeah. that when things would start going wrong i would try to add more lines which didn't ever help anything which only just bogged it all down so i mean i did these cards but i might have did like three or four that i just chucked <laughs> throughout because i had extra because it's just overworked like you see i started to overwork that old man down in the corner there down in the bottom left yeah to yeah. me that's that was starting to get overworked because i was just i don't know i was just oh, I gotta dig it. yeah i was uh to, to answer um uh to answer willie's uh question the way i um the way i understand it uh is um the difference between detail um, yeah information I would, and I would, detail are maybe two yeah i would say things. yeah i would say because i've heard different definitions on it but i would say that detail would be the number of things on the page like for example in this panel there's a desk there's a chair there's a little trash can there's boxes there's bricks there's this uh stand with more boxes in it and there's on the right you have a lot of more things on the floor like i would consider this a very detailed page mm -hmm. consider considering the things that are on it but yeah. In, um, but in cases like this door, for example, I would consider this rendered. I would say maybe heavily rendered. Um, yeah. Like one, like uh, like you were saying, you can get one item, one object, and uh, like for example, the gun that you have here, and then put the lines on it, and then render that out, and then make it heavy rendered. Um, that that's one thing. That's at least how I understand it. And then detail will be the amount of objects that you have on it. 
Um, yeah, I, um, but, I mean the idea. The idea is the same. I mean, we have a, a, a yeah. similar idea. Yeah, it's what, just what, um, you're probably more right. I'm not classically trained or anything like that. But yeah, I'm not big on terminology. But yeah, for me, I was thinking maybe like info is um, the amount of stuff and detail oh, so, yeah. is is more like worked in with the rendering. But yeah. you're right. You're right too, Elliot. Yeah, I see it your way as well, where detail could be considered also the amount of things. <laughs> it's a weird play. Um, yeah. But like, like this yeah, is just detail let, detail you got to let things there. breathe sometimes. Like uh, the yeah. guy on the right there, the side of his head, it's breathing. That's where the light's hitting the strongest. Um, yeah. It's that balance of letting it breathe and letting it, knowing um, where the detail goes and when. Exactly. Um, like, for example, uh, this top left figure, there's a, a black background, and then there's this white space. You can immediately yeah. see the character. And then you do the opposite with this character here with the armor. You have a white background yeah. and heavily black stuff around it. And so that's, that's a really awesome uh, understanding of uh, blacks and whites and, uh, and, um, and uh, what's this word? Uh, uh, composition and uh, yeah. getting things uh, played out right. It looks great. Great stuff, man. Yeah, I am. Um... I think that's great stuff. You know, um, when I see black and white art like this, I I think of Frank Miller's Sin City stuff. Yeah. I mean, that stuff is brilliant when it comes to black and white. Um, nice. I love his that Yellow Bastard book. It's <laughs> one of the best drawn books in the world. I just it's so yeah, beautiful. Um, and uh, uh, then, if you don't mind, um, maybe for the next few minutes, would you would you be up to uh, doing some drawing? Yeah. I just got to, uh, I might uh, turn off my camera for a moment so I can set it up. Yeah, I got to do the same thing. <laughs> and the same actually, thing, if, but yeah. if anyone in the chat wants to recommend some, maybe I'll just do a head sketch of something. Yeah, somebody that's recommend something for, from uh, the for chat. Dan. What would you like to see Dan draw? Because yeah, we can't, this can't be an art channel without any art on it. So let's, let's do some art. All right, I'll, I'm going to get my camera set up. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. Hold on. And you get the uh, things organized over here. Yeah, buddy. Let's see how I'm doing here. Trying to pull out my papers. Uh, there we go. Man, All right, so that? um, yeah, this is a piece that uh, I showed this off um yesterday on J no Monday on JBot's channel. This is a a fan art piece that I'm doing for uh, Frog G. Sweet. And um, yeah, I I, I did some of this uh, inks it's on some of the lines. And I'll yeah, see how much the, I can uh, get done today. Spider Man 300. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's take, let's see. Well, it is good. The Bully P says, I want you to do a cross of John Wick and Wukong. What is Wukong? I think it's this, um, this ape, if I'm not mistaken, it's ape that does uh, karate, I think it is. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that is. Uh, are there any references? Uh, are there any references, Willie? Monkey King. Uh, Monkey King. Monkey King. Can work. Can do that. Oh man, now I have my heart stuff. <laughs> but uh. I'm gonna have to look up Wukong now. Um, Just a second, let me. Version of uh... a monkey version of. Let me see what uh... John Wick. John... <laughs> Man, I like those John Wick movies. The third one is starting to get a little weird, though. Like, dude, you can't yeah. die in the John Wick movies. He fell off a building, and. 
Morpheus is still alive. What? You got <laughs> cut all up. To, like the whole thing I had series had going for it is it's realistic, you know. At least yeah. it was. Until they got him. They got him. They got him. They got him. I'm trying to look at a few Keanu Reeves pictures first. I don't know if I could do a. I don't, I've never drawn Keanu Reeves. I don't know what my likeness, how good my likeness would be. He already does look like a monkey king a bit. Yeah, because he's got the heavy side, the, the 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 hair, the sideburns and stuff. He's pulling it off. Nice. I'm gonna find a three quarter monkey here. king here. Mm, Monkey King John Wick. Yeah, this is the point in my in my process where I erase all these pencils and then start rendering. Take away all these pencils. Let's see. Isn't isn't there a character? Uh, Phil says, isn't there a character like that already? Uh, a monkey assassin. A monkey assassin. Man, there's a monkey everything. I think maybe yeah. not so much in America. We're not as monkey obsessed as like China. Monkey assassin. I wish I was cool like John Wick. Dude, I don't even have hair. <laughs> I'm trying his hair. I'm getting all jealous. Long black hair. Man. This dude's yeah, like. Yeah, hit monkeys one. Monkeys suck. There I said it. <laughs> Phil said, Phil said monkey sucks. <laughs> Man, they'll rip your face off and they won't think twice, you know? Yeah, man. They are not to be messed with. Man. It's gonna be me erasing for the whole, <laughs> for the whole drawing. <laughs> Let's see. Let me do some kind of rendering over here or something. How have um how have you uh taken the reception of your art in the last uh, few few years few months? What has been your reaction? Oh, I mean, to uh, appreciation. You know, it's, it's all it's all positive. Um, so it's uh, you know I, I appreciate all and any support I get. Um, uh, um, you know it's 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 great to get good feedback and stuff. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why I had stopped drawing or stopped finding too much interest uh, in drawing after a high school was that, um, and I didn't realize this till much later, but uh, that wow factor that you get um, from people, like after you show them your work, like that was, uh, that was always uh, motivating for me. And, and after high school, I, uh, I didn't get it at all because um, there's not really anyone to show your art to. And um, yeah, and now with um, with the way we're doing art now, it's, it's great to get, to get that again and and get motivated. Uh, yeah, the that you show. Yeah, um, you know, I if I need to warm up lately, I'll, I'll do like a quick head sketch, and that gives me something to share because most of the stuff I work on, I can't share, so it's. Um, yeah, that stuff can be motivating. Um, uh, geez, motivation is one of those things where it kind of comes and goes, so you have to kind of work whether or not you're motivated or find something in the work that's going to motivate you. To, um, but usually, you know, I have to get stuff done, and my bank account's empty, so that's good motivation right there. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get that yeah. paper. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
How do you take deadlines? Are you are you uh, okay with deadlines? You hate deadlines? Well, because my Whatever. schedule is so all over the place, deadlines are tougher for me to manage. Um, just because I don't know what the heck I'm going to have to do. Um, where I'm going to be and stuff. And then like on a big, long project, it's like, man, it's hard to really make many commitments. Um, as far as some like drawing somebody's whole book and stuff, because it's just, I don't know how much time I'm going to be able to get in to actually work it. I guess this guy needs some like monkey armor stuff. I like spikes. This monkey had spikes in this one. You think you should have a crown? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what the, the character I don't is. really know. Uh, even looking at these in Google images, they don't all have crowns, but some of them have like a little bit of something. Oh, is Wukong like a straight up dude, or is that just a gen general term for these monkeys? I don't know. Hopefully he's happy enough with it. You gotta Maybe have big ears. Us some confirmation. Let's see. Uh, Willie says the gun should have parts of the staff, no crown. Hey, okay, let's not make too many demands here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you should have just drawn the mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Phil, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> just say that to begin the with. character in the story, <laughs> Journey to the West. <laughs> Willie's like, low. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know what I drew here, but it's a Chinese armored uh, John a with, big, with big ears. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe It'll a little be. extra hairy. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, uh, I got a, um, a request one time. Uh, when I was on Joe's channel, uh, one of the first times that he did the sketch and stuff, I got a request to draw a Superman milking a cow. That was a funny request. <laughs> I saw that drawing. That's pretty yeah, wild, huh? That stuff was funny. Yeah, I don't think I <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I got carried away. No, nah, man, I just give you a hard time. <laughs> yeah, man, no worries about it. It says, no uh, I'll just hire you later. Nice. There you go. Sorry got carried away. Nice. There you go. So prepare to draw some monkeys, man. Uh, it's monkey time. Monkey is one of my favorite terms. I call my kids monkeys all the time because they're just jumping all over the place, acting all crazy all the time. Yeah, so much they're, my, they're my monkey boys. <laughs> Would you like for your kids or any, any of your kids to, to, have the, uh, to be able to draw? Is that something that... You know, I wouldn't. Um, that you like to work with them on? Yeah, my f four, nearly five year old boy, he's taken an interest in drawing. I really hope they don't become artists or musicians, which runs in oh, my nice. family. Oh, nice. Uh, so I, I hope they don't. Why? I'd actually prefer him to be a doctor or something or any kind of other interest. He seems to like numbers. He's a numbers guy. Oh, so that's, that's nice. cool. I mean, um, you know, so me not wanting him to do this stuff will make it like a hundred percent certain that he will. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, my parents were pretty supportive of me drawing. They're very supportive. Yeah, my my parents are like they. I don't know. I, I like to say that I didn't get much support um, because I felt like they were like man, meh about it. Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, they've never told me not to. I mean, they just they're like, yeah, go ahead and do do what's fun. Oh, and um, yeah, good stuff. Hey, Willie says, eh, okay, lol, okay. Could you share that, Elliot? Could I share what? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um. Oh, I think he's talking about the things. Superman milking the. Oh. Yeah. Ah, you yeah. want to see? Uh, um, let me see if I can find that. Uh. Yeah, I took that request and not, and then um, I didn't want to want anybody to think I didn't want him to think that I was a uh, that I was just going to draw for the stream and not finish and follow through with it and I, and I did the whole thing. 
I even colored it. <laughs> oh, you t you colored it too. Yeah. And how do you like uh, coloring? It is um, a beast on its own. Like um, I didn't, I mean, I didn't think it'd be as challenging as I, as it as it is. But um, yeah, there it is. I did this on yeah, uh, Joe Joe Sontag's channel. Um, I colored it later afterwards. It did this thing called the sketching stuff, as you can see here. Oh, uh, yeah. And then these are the artists that were there that day. And oh, John cool. Malin was there. And he told me to put that right here. <laughs> Malin was here on the cow. It was a fun time. Great stuff. And, uh, yeah, Superman milking the cow. Yeah, that's something he would do or has done. He's, yeah. He grew yeah, up on the uh, farm. Yeah, makes sense. You know, I, I love Superman, or I used to, um, back when he was Superman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's actually one of my favorite characters. I, I don't know. I tend to like people that people other people don't like. I know a lot of people have beef with Superman, but once you kind of get oh, over your beef with him, you'll see he's, like, the coolest. Yeah. I like Superman. So I mean, I, I hear I hear uh, people uh, complain that um, how could he be a cool superhero when his greatest nemesis is uh, Lex Luthor and it's just a man in the suit and and I th and I think I look at it the other way and I think that's actually really uh, cool that uh, for a man like Superman with all that power and strength that he has to like that he has to like find a way that doesn't require his strength to take down someone like Lex Luthor. I thought that was an interesting dynamic to yeah i mean like i wouldn't uh, you know the that whole thing is the fact that lex luther is just like a super genius uh, yeah it's you know super alpha type dude um but i think he tolerates luther more than anything he could easily kill any of anyone if he wanted to if he was like truly an asshole or something yeah, i think he kind point. of tolerates tolerates him more than anything same with batman like batman's not beating superman in any fight ever <laughs> superman is way too fast just like the flash probably gonna win 99 percent of the fights i mean even more than that because he's just too fast no i mean there's no speed kills you know what i'm saying yeah. if you're dealing with someone that's that fast they're gonna win i mean because the moment the fight starts, it's pretty much over. That's very true. Did you see that? Did you see that uh, clip of that? Um, what's this? That uh, those pages? Um, I think someone posted like a few days ago of a Catwoman taking out three <laughs> flashes. <laughs> yeah, like Captain. I, I had two different thoughts on that. I guess does she have cat powers or what? I don't know. Cause, but I, I don't I don't think a cat's reflexes would be that fast. Yeah, I know. I mean, even if they were, they might be faster than Batman's because it's superpower and he's yeah, just that's true. Right. But yeah. um but the I flash thought, thought was... three flashes? <laughs> what <laughs> like dude, like I was saying, I mean the flash is gonna win that fight. And like Flash versus Batman, Batman's dead. I'm sorry. Flash is way fast. Yeah. It, I, it's just because Batman sells more books, he's got to win every fight. It's retarded. <laughs> that is true. I'm not sure how my John Wick likeness is going, but how, yeah. And actually, uh, how do you uh, go about with uh, things like likenesses? Are you do you shy away from that? Uh, um, do you... I don't like. You saw that Joker piece. That was all likenesses. You I did just really good. I just yeah, charge more money. money. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you look to explore art outside of comics? Like painting or realistic? I'd, I'd like to start painting when, someday, but that's just not going to happen anytime soon. Like get into like fine painting type stuff or, or not even, you know, I don't know, just painting in general. And we got some comments. It says, uh, Phil says, hey, Captain Marvel is cooler than Supes. 
Shazam Uh-oh. is cooler than Soups. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, Willie says, watch that skit uh, from Pete Holmes about Batman and Superman. We should check that out. And uh, Zay says, Phil says, uh, she's just a kleptomaniac. Um, Catwoman. Yeah, she, she's... She certainly doesn't deserve to take over the Batman book. <laughs> Be yeah. the main focus of a Batman book. Look, he got big <laughs> ears. His big ears are on purpose, just so you guys know I'm not because he's a monkey. Yeah, he's a hairy my monkey. Says, my sister hairy says, neck. yeah, no. And uh, Willie, Willie P says, uh, don't, didn't Batman create a device that slowed down the flash with frequencies? And he says, uh, that is a badass drawing. You and know, he says, what about Max and Pitt? Oh, man. Max and Pitt. Uh, yeah, and that... And that Comic thing, uh, Batman didn't use any any machine. It was just it was just three flashes running at Catwoman, and then Catwoman just knocked them all out with three kicks. And they're gone. Yeah, That's super crazy. stupid, dude. I hate Tom King. He's the reason I stopped yeah. reading comics. It was like I said, what he did with um, Wally West. They brought him back to life. He's been gone for the whole like New Fifty Two thing. And then, you know, it comes back and they destroy his character immediately. Like, I like, I don't know, Dan DiDio, he screwed that up really bad. Uh, I know there's a lot of Dan DiDio fans amongst Comicsgate or whatever. And I know he had great contributions. And DC Comics is worse for losing him. But that's one of the things I never agree with is how bad his... uh, His writing? uh, how, How bad some of his editorial decisions were to allow that to happen. He lost my money at that point. Mm. Nice. Kitty Chinese armor stuff. And the Furious is in the house. He says, hey, Elliot and Booty, what's going on? Uh, Neff. What up, man? Good buddy, Neff. He's good people. Yeah, man, he's awesome. Yeah, Zade. Uh, I see Phil said he likes me because I actually read comics. It is a big deal. Uh, you can't like make a good comic if you don't know what a good comic is. You have to know what a good comic is. You got to read it. Um, you have to read good comics, not bad comics that are maybe beautifully drawn or whatever, but actually just suck. They're poorly, <laughs> uh, poorly written. I mean, you can't. Or bad storytelling, nothing but splash page images all the time. Just doesn't work. It's not storytelling. It's not. It's not comics. It's pinups, mm-hmm. and that's some different. Dude, I, you can really get crazy with this armor. I don't know why I added spikes. I don't think they do spikes. <laughs> <laughs> the booty juice resin does. Yeah, I, I, I like spikes a lot. I'll, I'll throw spikes on everything. Any chance I get. Oh, you could have venomized it and got away with like messing up with the likeness. Yeah, well, kind of looks like him a little bit. Mm-hmm. About as much as Ron Garney's drawings did, so. Nice. <laughs> He's getting kind of spikes. Fun. I'm drawn with this thick pencil to try to bang this out a little quicker. Yeah. We'll probably go for like maybe another uh, few minutes and then uh and then we'll uh end the stream. Yeah man, thanks and, for having me on. Uh, it's fun to go over no, some no of this stuff and give me a chance to talk about storytelling a little bit which is uh interest of mine lately and that's what's on my mind yeah no problem yeah you're, you're more than welcome to, to come back anytime and continue talking about stories because i'm a big fan of uh your art yeah, dude i'm a big fan of your art dude of the stories that aquila piece recently yeah who colored that man that jeez man that in between the your art and the colors, that's a good looking piece, dude. Hey, thanks, man. Um, uh, that was done by um 
Avery Ferdinand is the man's name, and I'm trying to find it. Can't find it. Yeah, it and, is. Uh, yeah, dude. Um, I've been in um, chats or whatnot where uh, we've talked about you, Elliot, man, and how good your stuff oh, is. And um, someone was saying it reminded them of um, George Perez, and I didn't see it at first, but then I saw. I was like, dang, he does have. Did he, is he an influence on you at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, yeah, he's a big influence. Oh wow! I actually did. I actually did something um in one of my drawings uh to honor uh him and his legacy. Um, it's a minor thing, but um, but yeah, I uh, I'll show you guys in just a second. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna bring up that um, I'm gonna bring up that Aquila piece if I can find it. Where to go? Hello. Uh, nope, no, 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 I can't find it. And I'm just trying to get my name out there, also get some kind of uh, recognition among the people, and hopefully, they can enjoy my art some. And it's always a pleasure. Uh, and yesterday, for example, yesterday I was on Cloud Nine because um, uh, the creator of Aquila um, Artwork was on Mandy's uh, stream yesterday, and uh, they were and then they were looking at the artwork, and then um, and then Dale was on the stream also, and man, just hearing him uh, react to uh, my art, oh man, I just dude, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, blown. Dale is like you know, there's nobody that draws better than Dale. <laughs> Yeah, man. Nobody. And there's a piece right there. You know, he's someone I forgot to mention for. Yeah, dude. That is good stuff. Yeah. Dude, great right. combination. You and the cars here. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, man, um, I'd hire I don't know if this... right there. <laughs> Thanks, man. And I don't know if it's because of this collaboration or not, but um, I've been asked to do another piece that I'm working on right now uh, that I'll show off later because. Uh, because want to keep that on the wraps for a little bit but, sure. um, but yeah and um and i'll show you the commission where i did the george george paris influence uh, um i did this uh piece for um for apex comics i'm not sure if you're familiar with apex with brett and, Sounds uh, familiar. Did, yeah, and then he asked me to Damn. do his uh, three characters called Femme Fatale. Dude, that is cool. And I, I did this in honor of him. It's just a small bit, but I did this like he does that in like most of his uh most of his big group shots. So have somebody shooting something at someone, and then it'll look like this a little bit. And uh, I did this with him in mind, like because I was trying to find a way. What would be the best way to show the impact of the beam on that on the robot's hand? And um. And I was like, I'm a, I'm a George Paris this thing, and yeah, yeah and I was, <laughs> dude, because they're supposed to be like big Sentinel type monsters fighting these uh, three heroes, and uh, yeah, yeah and, dude, your stuff like is that. fantastic, man. And you know, this Thanks, is man. great layout, easy to read, uh, nice black yeah. versus white. You know, you're an amazing artist, dude. Yeah, yeah. thanks, man. So I, 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 I have to, it. I should have you on my channel. I gotta start doing more on my channel. I should have you on. Yeah. And we're gonna flip yeah, the script yeah. on you. You're gonna we're gonna look through <laughs> your stuff and talk about your influences more and um, yeah, man. all that, and maybe yeah, draw a bunch. Piece. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm down for that. Um, let's see. Oh, I got a bunch of comments that I missed. Odin's here. It's like, good morning, Ellie and Dan in chat. What's going on, Odin? How you doing, man? Good to see what you. Thanks for stopping by. Oh yeah. He's like, and Willie P wants to know if we have a Twitter. And Willie, yeah, um, uh, Dan's contact info is in the description below. So just take a look at the descriptions and then click on the link and be sure to follow. And uh, yeah, he puts out great art. And he also he's also a great supporter. He also uh, uh, promotes other people's uh, stuff. And um, yeah, yeah, please be sure to follow him. Frequency Girl's here. Hey, Frequency Girl, how you doing? What's going on? Good to see you here. Uh, Vanessa says, later, guys. Have a great one. You too, man. Later now. D Wag, D Wag is here. What's D-Wag. going on, man? Bow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <I feel like him. laughs> now nah, he's got the energy always, man. Yeah, 
He said Delicate was talking about Elliot last night. Yeah, man, that, that stuff was like, man, I was spazzing out. And then uh, talking about his Aquila piece. Yeah. D Wag. My sister says, you should uh, show the drawing you did for me. Ah, uh, yeah, I did a piece for my sister also. She's a big fan of the symbiotes of uh, oh, back yeah. in the day with. Uh, and her favorite symbiote is um, Scream. Oh, yeah. Understandably so. Yeah, Scream is an awesome character. Cool. I did a piece. Cool design. Yeah, I did a piece for her. I can find it. You said that's your sister, or are you just referring yeah. to your sister? No, that's my actual sister. Yes. Cool. I can't deny it. You know, <laughs> my sister tries to support my stuff, and I tell her to go away. So stop <laughs> embarrassing me. <laughs> but yours is yeah. cool. But my, I got my reason. And this is the piece I did. She wanted me to draw. Oh, dude. I have, Damn. I have two others. I have two siblings. Um, my, it's three of us, and uh, she wanted me to draw our three favorite symbiotes. And I did the last year for me. A uh, screen for my sister, and then my brother's a big fan of Venom, and I did Dude, all three of those rad. pieces. Yeah. Dude, it's great. Uh, yeah. Dimensionality. I like the overlapping the characters. Yeah. It's very it's cool. Fun. Dude, you are so Thanks, good, man. bro. Thanks, man. Man. But yeah. Yeah, fantastic, else. dude. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. That means a lot coming from a, a great, great artist like yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah dude, right, it's man. really cool stuff. Yeah, I've been a uh, admirer of yours, of yours for a while. Like I said, uh, we've definitely talked about you, me, and that's awesome. People. Man. So good, you know. It's noticeably <laughs> better than your average stuff, you know. It's very good. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I know there's a bunch of comments here. Sub chat. Matt Barr is here, too. Now, what's going on? Matt man? Barr, what's up, man? Yeah, man, what's going on, man? Yeah, got your back, Matt Barr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Odin's here also. I think I think I already said hello, but um, he says your stuff's always always kills. Congrats on the key on love. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm done. I I got that. I got compliments from uh, Keon on my composition and then how I did the things. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. I'm not doing it. <laughs> retire. Yeah, yeah, I'm retired. Yeah. yeah retired now. I got a big compliment from Dale. It's yeah, over. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't so know who done. you think you're talking to, but I'm. <laughs> I am drawing no more. Yeah. Yeah, hood, yeah, classic style. Thanks, you man. Gotta, Thanks. You got to exit on a high note, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come out. I'm, yeah, I'm going to do the Jay Z thing. I'm going to step out while I'm hot. I, I like uh, Phil's comment that I drew him that I was drawing Phil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must have a big <laughs> ear. <laughs> you got that big ear. Yeah, he definitely's yeah, got yeah. the chops. You know? Yeah, he's definitely. He's got the chops. In just a second, I'll be right back. I think somebody's at the door. Just a second. Oh, good, man. Yeah, Damn, why are you drawing me? Can I highlight comments when he's gone? Let's see. I don't think I had that power. I'm going to just check out the chat here for a moment. Got Hojo, Matt Barr. How do you guys like my monkey piece? More monkeyous? Mon hey, let's add a tail. Dude, if you have a character that has a tail, you just got to get it. I don't know. Where's it going to come from? The back? Can't go like Dude, always take advantage of a tail if a character has a tail. You just use it to... Uh, send the viewer back to the focal point or something like that look at that you draw with this big thick piece of lipstick here try and get done immediately <laughs> i gotta start using this more often my big thick uh two millimeter here look at some deets the anchor's got to do all the work now I should ask Elliot if he wants to try out on being uh, my Alex Sinclair that I'm looking for. So, you know, I, I need a, I'd like to pawn off my inking onto somebody else. I just add some uh, stuff to him. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. 
Oh, I'm as zoomed in as I can get on my camera right now. Here's the monkey, the monkey man. Looks like my son when he grows up, because he's a little monkey boy. Pretty weird. <laughs> kind of an odd request. Um, you know, I gotta put the old signature on here somewhere. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. All good, man. Um, what did I miss? I just, uh, I don't know. Not much. I was about to look at the comments, but you'd already gone through them all before you left. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I was like, can I time. highlight on these? I can't highlight it. They, they should yeah, change that. No, yeah. that's not your bad. Don't worry about it. And, uh, Phil says, what's the project you're most excited to work on in the next three years? Hmm. Is that for me or you? Um... Me? I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not currently on any anything. I'm just uh, doing this stuff. Uh, fan art stuff and then my book um that i hope to uh, have announced by the end of the year and then i'm gonna look i'm gonna work on that but yeah I'm not really tied to any projects now just uh, focused on doing my book and um and yeah i'm gonna have a stream at the end of the year uh and show off all the work that i have for it so far which would be uh character sketches concept art uh, the name of the comic, the logo, and uh, and things like that, and then start putting the pressure on myself to get the comic actually finished. Yeah, um, for me, I'm excited. Um, you know, we're halfway through my contribution to Lost Pages 3, so I, I started getting excited about the people, drawing him again. Nice. Um, you know, um, I'm excited about that. I'm... I did this really cool piece I'm proud of that hasn't been shown for uh, Eddie Winkler for Sovereign oh, Wolf. Sovereign nice. Wolf 2, I did this piece, and I, Eddie was on a stream the other day. He said that Sovereign Wolf 3 might, or 2 might not be out until two, uh, till 2023. Yeah, he's been. So I'm like, man, I no one's going to see that thing for a while, and I'm excited man. for people to see that one because I... Um, I don't know. I was proud of it. It took some good work in and uh, it's just more of that kind of figure work we're talking about where it's just like old school Marvel style. Two big figures um, mm. sort of getting into a scuffle. Nice. And, um, yeah, so I'm excited for people to see that when that comes out. That and... Um, yeah, I do enjoy drawing the people. Um, he has some fun elements. Yeah, the jacket and the hoodie. Um, that, I like the character yeah, with like a like... jacket or something that helps show movement yeah. a little bit better, you know? Um, yeah, it helps out a lot because like um, the, the, the jacket can flap in the breeze, can uh, yeah, help. Uh, I love those elements. Yeah. Some character designs are like, oh, this would be great if they just had a little, yeah, little something to show a little more motion somehow. So like, and I'm kind of weird. I like to draw clothing. I like folds and fabric and stuff, and sort of <laughs> guessing where the folds are gonna go. Right. Yeah, it's a challenge. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's a challenge. I love. Uh, I I like drawing clothes. I nice. just um wish I stayed up more on the uh, like modern fashions and stuff. I'm not much of a fashionista or anything. Mm -hmm. So I, I, sometimes I get jealous of people's fashion sense. So that's uh, an area of study that I'd like to get into. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's all, I'm assuming it's also a beast of his own because it is a challenge. So uh, Matt and Odin, yeah, this is, um, it's John Wick as one of those monkey, like Chinese monkey king people, I guess. Wukong was the term um, new to me. So it's a mix of John Wick and uh, 
Look at his uh with a little bit his of armor fear. doesn't even cover his shoulder. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Let me just add a little something. Nice. He got broad shoulders. Hey, it's He's got his little brother's book. armor on. It's a comic book, you know. Yeah. Another piece of armor is... here. Nice. Look at that. Just fixed immediately. Yeah. And Willie says, I, I didn't think you'd do it. It's actually for an idea I've had in my head for a while now, and I was stuck, but the artwork got me back on track. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that great piece of art. No problem, Willie. Uh, thanks for the suggestion. I, uh, no one else had anything. <laughs> you, were, you were the only competition. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And Matt says, um, like and share. Yeah, please th please like and subscribe uh, to the people in the chat. I really appreciate it. And uh, it says, give us more monkey, please. <laughs> Nice. Oh, maybe he's got some more armor. I, I don't know. I'm just filling the time here as we. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's got another piece of armor. No, man, I'm like not in a rush or anything. So whatever, it's all good to me. Uh, yeah, we'll the house is cleared out right now, which is fantastic. I don't have. Speaking of monkeys, I don't have my little monkey boys jumping around, <laughs> trying to draw my paper or whatever, just being massive distractions. Nice. Matt says John Wick or John Chimp? Yeah, John Chimp. John Chimp. And then Odin says, don't keep up with uh, with fashion. Everyone gets drawn in pantaloons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a really funny bit about pantaloons. Uh, Mr. Show. I don't know if you've ever seen that old sketch comedy show, but I don't know. There's a joke in there. It's called Mr. Show. It had well, I think so. David Cross and Bob Odenkirk, who's now mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, no, I it's like '90s sketch comedy that was on HBO. It's like my one of my favorite shows of all time. Nice. They be talking about there's this bit like it takes place in the past, and uh, back when pantaloons were a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just some funny line where it's like. Checking out this chick, and it's like, ooh, and those fine pantaloons. <laughs> it's just <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Nice. Oh, yeah, pantaloons. Yeah, Hojo knows what I'm talking about. Mr. Show is like, I mean, despite the fact that David Cross is uh, a freaking maniac now, yeah. <laughs> he used to be funny and not just an NPC style dude. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll have to catch that because I don't, yeah, I don't know if it, I don't even know if it, I, I hate recommending comedy to people because nobody ever likes it. So I don't recommend any comedy stuff to anybody. <laughs> I mean, especially sketch comedy shows can be really hit and miss. You know, you know what I was watching last night to unwind was uh, Workaholics. You ever watch that? Oh wow! Yeah, that, actually, was, uh, that shit is pretty funny to me. Yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't gotten a chance to get into it, but I've heard yeah, about it. It's on Amazon Prime, so I was... Nice, right, so I have to check that out. Checking that out. That's... Dude, I'm like a monkey king. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I like, I like Keanu Reeves. I, uh, he's, you know, John Wick is cool as hell. I, it is getting weird, though. Three, three started off really great. I just don't like the ending. You know, if you guys have seen it, he falls off of a building and walks it off. <laughs> At the very end, I think, yeah? Yeah, he walks it off. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, dude, come on, dude. You have to not walk that one off. You know, something else. That, this is getting too ridiculous. Like, keep the realistic physics that they had. I was... You know, I was uh, noticing in him at the end, like, I don't know if it was just me or if the movie was done that way, but I, I, I think I saw, like, Keanu um, not uh, with quick movements as in previous oh. movies. Like, I, I saw him like he was, like, older or something. Well, maybe because um, he so did take I don't that. know if that was... That maybe because he's taken so much damage to the movie or something. Maybe they were yeah. trying to be a little bit more, more realistic and I missed it or something. I don't know. Willie P says Kids in the Hall was a classic. Uh, <laughs> dude, I love the new Kids in the Hall stuff. I thought was actually really strong. 
um, uh, there's a bit like in the middle of the season where there's this Shakespeare bust that this, you know, like a Shakespeare statue that's just the bust. Yeah. And this guy just sort of, he comes home from work and he talks to the statue, even though the statue's not real. And he makes <laughs> a wish for the statue to become real. So, oh, wow. so that, you know, he has William Shakespeare there with him alive and his wish comes true. I don't remember how it happens. And so, oh my God, you know, there's William Shakespeare. He's alive and he's the bust. But remember, he's just a bust, so he starts bleeding and shooting blood out the sides where his arms would be. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's just filling the room. There's just a ton of blood shooting all over. And he's screaming. He's like, ah! And then his blood's coming out of <laughs> his chest and all this stuff. And it's just bloody and crazy. Uh, because, you know, he got his wish that he came into life, but, you know, he was only a bust. So he's just bleeding all over the place. <laughs> It's a really funny bit. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And then eventually uh, they bandage, bandage him up and he's okay, even though, you know, he's just a bust <laughs> and he lost way more blood than he ever could have had. And um, <laughs> then it turns out Shakespeare's just like watching YouTube and eating junk food and stuff. And he's not acting like Shakespeare. He's just acting like a normal person. Yeah. Like even worse than that's a normal funny. person. Like, <laughs> just like a, a crazy guy. Yeah, just like a mindless uh, kind of consumerish type dude. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, it, it's a funny bit. I really like that bit a lot. It's like, oh, these guys still got it, or maybe I just want them to still have it because I'm so starved for comedy that's okay to watch. Like, I, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was woke. I don't feel like they're woke. So yeah, that makes it okay to watch in my opinion yeah makes it a little did anyone else see that uh i don't know if anyone in the comments. yeah i think we do have some comment yeah artwork is in the chat uh, hey how you doing what's going on artwork? man appreciate uh, uh showing off the artwork yesterday that was great um odin says mr show was bob odenkirk and kung pao was steve Oder odenkirk odenkirk yeah right. uh steve odenkirk he also directed uh the original ace ventura Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. So they're like, and then they have another brother whose name I don't remember. He was on The Simpsons, uh, like a producer on The Simpsons, writer, producer on The Simpsons for a long time, back when The Simpsons was good. I don't know if he's still on there. Um, you know, I wouldn't watch The Simpsons. Hey, eh, Simpsons. I'm sorry if you're Simpsons fans out in the chat, but that show's got to get canceled, man. It's been on too long. It's, it's done, man. I don't think there's anything left. Uh, I I cancel that shit right away if I was in charge. <laughs> like you guys had a good run. Let's stop. This, yeah, thirty years has been a lot. Like, there's no point to keep going. I, I kind of wish, you know, I, I, that's kind of the same feeling now with mainstream comics. Like, even if I was to draw for like Marvel or something, and they put me on Spider Man, like, what's the point of doing another Spider Man book? It's, you know, and then I know what it's going to be. It's going to be whatever, you know, I know what the story is. All I know is like pages two and three is going to be a double splash page or a splash page of him swinging over New York City. Oh, fun. Like, dude, we've seen it a million times. Stop. No more Spider-Man. No more. That's what I said. <laughs> No more Spider-Man nice. swinging over New York City. I don't care if I ever see that again in my life. It's been done to death. Here's nice. the Monkey King. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it looks great, man. Looks like John Wick nice. a little bit enough. Yeah. yeah Maybe yeah. passable. Yeah. Good he wouldn't be able to sue me for his likeness because it's not close enough. <laughs> yeah. And he's never had spikes on this stuff, so he's all right. And um. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank thank you very much to everybody in the chat, and thank you very much to Dan. I have to uh, have to close the stream a little bit. Yeah, it's fun hanging out, man. We'll have to yeah, do it really again. Appreciate. Sure. Yeah, definitely, man. And um, yeah, there's a lot of comments. I'm sorry uh, to everybody in the chat. There's a lot of comments. I'm missing a bunch. Um, and Arberg says, Elliot, how does it feel to have Dale Kim praise your work yesterday? It was great. It was. Uh, I was talking with uh, Dan earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to quit. 
part because it's <laughs> yeah, much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I've been watching what we do in the shadows lately. Yeah. My wife just doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that show or movie. I'm not sure what that one is. Yeah. But. And then, yeah, Odin, yeah, all the bloody Shakespeare statue. Yeah, dude, that yeah. was a funny bit. That was my favorite. I'm squishing, I'm squishing your head? Yeah, that's another classic. Isn't all? Yeah. Brain Candy is one of my favorite movies ever. It, it's, yeah. it's just wild. I just love it. Nice. Jiminy Glick is funny as hell. Yeah. Because you're dark. Like, so exactly. Yeah, it goes up and down. It's funny as hell. Yeah, hold your eye, crush your head. It's old. And yeah, so um, before we uh, uh, wrap up, um, uh, uh, Dan, where can we find you? I have your links down below, but is there any place uh, where we can find? How how can we get in contact? Yeah, I, I think we, you uh, got it. Art? You know, if somebody, yeah, you contact me through Twitter DM if you want to speak to me personally about something or whatever. Um, then that's a good way to view my art. Um, also, if you like Instagram, I have a profile called Drawing Blood. Yeah, that's a one for the nice. eye. I'm kind of writing out and uh, zeros for the O's. Nice. So that's my. That's the that's handle. My on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. You can see a, I got a lot of art there yeah. on that Instagram nice. profile that might not have been shared. But other than that, you know, any of the things you shared. Nice. And yeah, my yeah, artwork is popping that. up here and there, all over the place. So. Yeah, definitely. You'll, you'll see it on various campaigns and uh, definitely Lost Pages 3. Yeah, be sure to back that, guys. When that comes out, Lost Pages 3 is going to be great. Ten sequential pages from the man right here. It's yeah. great. It's good. So we're gonna, it's going to be worth the price of mission loan. And then um, I know Phil will follow it up with some other awesome artists. And exactly. it'll be dope. Awesome. Yeah. And, and yeah, so thank you very much to my guest, Dan. And then, uh, and then in the chat, you, you know where you can find me. I'm on uh, YouTube, I'm on Twitter, uh, Instagram also. I'm on Facebook. <clears throat> All of the links are in the description below for my stuff and also for Dan. So please be sure to check uh, his stuff out. And uh, please like and subscribe. The likes help out a lot. And uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm uh, I think, 20-something subscribers away from uh, 200. So uh, nice. Yeah, if you guys can sh share that out, it'd be great. Um, yeah, and guys, have a great day. And then uh, next week, uh, I'll do another stream. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a guest uh, for then. And um, at the same exact uh, time, I don't know if we'll go for two hours like I did today. I was kind of like um, a yeah, spur of the moment type of thing because yeah. I, I didn't think we'd take that long. But, uh, but yeah, so thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much to everybody in the chat, um, for everybody watching this also on replay. And uh, that's it. That's all for us uh, today. And I'll see you guys uh, next week. Take care. Thanks. Uh...